minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, liftoff. Perfect. Bravo, SpaceX. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, the world's most powerful rocket, has not flown for a three-year hiatus, and now it comes back and works just as well like a normal routine. It was a simply outstanding success, safely deploying several satellites more than 36,000 kilometers or 22,400 miles above the Earth's surface, the U.S. Space System Command has said. The success of the U.S. Space Force's USSF-44 mission means that SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket is just now one of a handful of operational rockets in the world that's demonstrated the ability to launch satellites directly to geosynchronous orbit. More importantly, it's one of just three U.S. rockets with that established capability. The other two, ULA's Atlas V and Delta IV, will cease to be available for U.S. military missions by the end of 2023 meaning that Falcon Heavy may briefly become the only rocket in the world able to launch certain U.S. military missions until ULA's next-generation Vulcan rocket is ready to prove itself. Falcon Heavy is a testament to the awesomeness of humanity, the SpaceX CEO tweeted. Indeed, it's been quite a long journey. Known as USSF-44 and initially scheduled to launch more than two years ago, the U.S. Space Force mission finally lifted off November 1, 2022, after relentless payload delays. By mid-2021, the hardware required for SpaceX's first Falcon Heavy launch since June of 2019, mainly three new first-stage boosters, had finished qualification testing and was shipped to Florida in anticipation of a late 2021 or early 2022 launch. But that launch never came. Only in November 22 did most or all of USSF 44's payloads finally come together, resulting in a gap of more than 40 months between Falcon Heavy launches as practically every other payload assigned to the rocket in the interim experienced its own significant delays. Regardless, on November 1st, Falcon Heavy lifts off for the fourth time and performs flawlessly for the nine minutes that the U.S. Space Force allowed SpaceX's webcast to continue. Over the course of those nine minutes, Falcon Heavy's twin side boosters, both flying for the first time, helped send the rest of the rocket on its way to space before separating from the center core, upper stage, and payload to boost back towards the Florida coast. Less than eight minutes after liftoff, they safely touched down seconds apart at SpaceX's LZ-1 and LZ-2 landing zones. Lacking grid fins or landing legs, Falcon Heavy's intentionally expanded center core or middle booster continued burning for another 90 seconds and only separated from the upper stage after reaching a speed of almost 4 kilometers per second or 8,900 miles per hour, which was a new record for a SpaceX rocket booster. What an incredible sight. With these two side boosters, this marks the 150th and 151st overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. Past Falcon Heavy missions have also attempted landings of the central booster on one of SpaceX's automated drone ships in the Atlantic Ocean. However, the mass and orbital requirements of USSF-44's payloads mandated that the core booster for this mission forego landing and future reuse in order to dedicate maximum fuel for a direct insertion into geostationary orbit about 22,000 miles or 35,400 kilometers above Earth. The center core, B-1066, was likely obliterated when it re-entered Earth's atmosphere, traveling at approximately 50% of orbital velocity. Side boosters B-1064 and B-1065, however, will be rapidly refurbished for a future U.S. Space Force mission that SpaceX, perhaps incorrectly, says could follow USSF-44 as early as later this year. Unless SpaceX has received an additional USSF launch contract in secret, the company's next mission appears to be USSF-67, which the U.S. Space Systems Command reported would launch as early as January 2023 in a latest press release. USSF-44 and 67 are technically set to launch in the same U.S. fiscal year, 
but not the same calendar year. USSF-44 is SpaceX's first direct geosynchronous launch, meaning that Falcon Heavy is attempting to deliver the U.S. military's payloads to a circular geosynchronous orbit, or GEO, approximately 36,000 kilometers or 22,400 miles above the Earth's surface. Geosynchronous refers to the fact that a spacecraft's orbital velocity matches Earth's rotational velocity at that altitude, making it a popular destination for communications and Earth observation satellites that want to observe the same region of Earth all the time. Ordinarily, to simplify the rocket's job, most GEO-bound satellites are launched into an elliptical geosynchronous or geostationary transfer orbit, GTO, and they would use their own propulsion to circularize that ellipse. On a direct-to-GEO launch, the rocket does almost all the work. After reaching a parking orbit in low Earth orbit, LEO, Falcon Heavy's upper stage likely completed a second burn to geosynchronous transfer orbit. Then, while conducting a complex ballet of thermal management and tank pressure maintenance to prevent all its cryogenic liquid oxygen, or LOX, from boiling into gas and its refined kerosene, RP-1, from freezing into an unusable slush, the upper stage must coast uphill for around five or six hours. On that journey from an altitude of about 300 kilometers to 36,000 kilometers, in addition to the above task, the upper stage must also survive passes through both of Earth's radiation belts. At Apogee, Falcon S2 must reignite its Merlin vacuum engine for around one or two minutes to reach a circular geosynchronous orbit. Payload deployment will follow and could last anywhere from a few minutes to an hour. Finally, to be a dutiful space tenant, Falcon's upper stage must complete at least one or two more burns to reach its final destination, a graveyard orbit a few hundred kilometers above GEO. While the Falcon 9 rocket is powerful, it doesn't have the ability to hit all nine of the Department of Defense's reference orbits required for its launch providers to hit. So, with the Falcon Heavy, SpaceX is at an advantage in terms of bidding on military launch contracts. SpaceX's forthcoming Starship and Super Heavy booster, of course, will be able to reach all nine orbits, although it's likely years away from a stable configuration required by the government. It is, nevertheless, on the way. Because of this, Falcon Heavy is likely to have a limited shelf life, says Todd Harrison, Managing Director for Metria Strategic Insights. Once SpaceX's new Super Heavy is operational and has a proven track record to assure national security customers, Falcon Heavy will no longer be needed, Harrison said. So I suspect its useful life is perhaps less than five years and likely only a handful of launches during that time. But it is a beauty to behold when it launches, especially when those side boosters return and land in sync. Anyway, great to see that the FH is back in action again. Congratulations, SpaceX. Your engineers absolutely rock. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Why? Because your support motivates us to create more quality content. And for that, we thank you very much. And we hope to see you again next time.